Welcome to Movie Friends. We are your hosts, Seth and Michelle. And today we're talking about The Muppet Christmas Carol from 1992. Directed by Brian Henson, written by Jerry Jewell, based on the book by Charles Dickens, cinematography by John Fenner, edited by Michael Jablow, composed by Miles Goodman and Paul Williams, starring Michael Caine, Gonzo the Great, Rizzo the Rat, Kermit the Frog, Robin, Miss Piggy, Fozzie the Bear, Waldorf and Statler, Sam the Eagle, Professor Honeydew, and Beaker. Michelle, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Seth! Merry Christmaka! Yes. Were you visited by any ghosts last night? <laughs> Spirit! Um, no, I wasn't. Okay. I wasn't. But I okay. was visited by the Muppets. Man, oh man. As I was writing the intro for this episode, I said I cannot deviate from what they did in their own opening credits. Yeah, I, that's the first note I have. It's great. It's so great. Hey, if you're listening to the show for the first time, this is a little different of an episode. It's going to be a little shorter. It's just a little Christmas surprise. We're not going to do some of the segments that we normally do. This is just, you know, this one is just for us, you know? It is for us. Yeah. This is our yeah. Christmas present to ourselves. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> because spoiler alert, I love this Christmas movie. Spoiler alert, this is my favorite Christmas movie. Wow, really? Oh. All time. Did I know that prior to us doing this? I'm not sure. I know when we were discussing different movies and this was on the list, I think I just put like, yes. Yes. Yeah. This one, there was one movie that didn't make the cut this year. Yeah. That will definitely, I won't say what it is because it is, if if we don't do it by next December, it will happen at some point. Yeah. yeah. But this was like a no questions asked, definitely doing this movie. And it's delightful. It is so joyful and it brings me so much happiness and emotion. I pretty much, I sobbed through this entire movie. Yeah. Because I can't help it. I, I, I literally can't help it. But you don't feel bad crying. No, no, no. It's not bad movie. crying. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. It's just like this, the singing, the cuteness, the story, <laughs> the love. Like it takes you over and you just have an outer it's... body experience. <laughs> And you just cry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Were you into the Muppets when you were Growing younger? Growing up? Yeah. Yeah. I watched the Muppet show and I grew yeah. up with this movie and mm -hmm. I grew up with the soundtrack and I grew up with the full version. Yes. So, you know, when it came out, I don't remember when people were like, oh my God, when love was gone, did anybody see that deleted scene i'm like what are they talking about i yeah. only know this movie with that scene right right i didn't know that was cut yeah i think the version that we had as kids had it but then the dvd copy that we had yeah didn't right. or something i don't know the whole history i just know that it was cut you can watch it on disney plus but you have to go into the extra features which is yeah. stupid just put it in the movie put it as and the main movie did you notice you can watch the full version in extras you can watch this deleted scene and then you can watch the full version so if you can watch yeah, the full yeah. version watch the put the full ver i don't understand put the full version up right that's what i'm saying like just yeah. make it the version right. don't make people the, have to yeah. go in and press a special button so stupid and what i noticed this time around is the song that Tiny Tim sings, and then Scrooge sings at the end with Tiny Tim. You know, the love we found makes more sense. Like thematically, when you have that song, love is gone because mm -hmm. it's about losing love. Like you had love and then it's gone. And Scrooge loses the love of his life. This, this movie doesn't end with him coming back and finding her and they get together. The love that he finds in his life is the love of like the community and people. It's just that the people happen to be Muppets. <laughs> Right, but yeah, but in this world, they're not Muppets. Right, 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 right. I do want to talk about this beginning. This beginning rules. It's so good. It sets you up. You are in. It's a one shot over the rooftops of all these like miniatures. Yeah. And then it just slides to the right and you're street level with humans, real life horses. And I rebound it like three times. 
to watch that transition, I was like, how did they mm -hmm. do this? And of course, mm -hmm. it's like, well, we, we kind of know how they did it, but it's still like, it just looks so good. And I was like, why did they go so hard? Like on this Muppet movie, <laughs> like just all I'm the so time glad you brought spent. that up. Yeah, yeah. This to me looks really good. And I was really yeah. searching for strings for sure, sure, sure. like where you could see like a screen, you know, <laughs> Mm -hmm. The only time is when Kermie is watching the penguin skating. Yeah, yeah. And you can kind of see like the background kind of just looks yeah. like a, mm -hmm. just a blue background, right? Scrooge besides walking into that, the vortex. Scro right, Scrooge walking. A little, walk bit, a little sure. bit. Yeah. But besides that, like the effects are pretty damn good. Yes, it looks very good. It looks really good. You, you sent me the thing about the barrel, Kermit walking yeah. the barrel. I had no idea. Me neither. Yeah. We're talking about the scene where Kermit is coming home with Tiny Tim from church and they're singing and they're walking and you see a full shot of, so you see Kermit's legs and that's yeah. a big deal, right? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. if you look closely, you will see underneath them, the platform is, the snow is rolling and that was a barrel to keep it moving. It took 10 people to, you know, have Kermit move. It's insane. Yeah. It's, and it, Magical. but it looks good. Yeah. It looks so good. Once you know what's happening, you can see what's happening. Yeah. But as I've said many times on the show before, I don't care if I can see what's happening. It's still really cool. Yeah, right. Like the visuals don't have to always be a total trick. <laughs> no, no. But for the time, this is this looks really good. Yeah, I, lo I absolutely love it. Yeah. Do you have a favorite Muppet? And we can say, like, over the course of all Muppet Dumb or Justice movie, yeah. wh whatever you want. Oh, my gosh. It's so hard. It's so hard. I mean, I love Kermit. Yeah. But he's just, like, an obvious choice. Yeah. I love The Swedish Chef. Okay. Uh, I love Animal. All right. And I love Rizzo the Rat. Wow. Those would be, like, the three that I like the least, maybe. How can you not like Rizzo? I mean, Although, I love Gonzo, too. I mean, then it's like, a, and then Robin, MVP to Robin. Uh, Kermit's I, nephew I, is I playing really Tiny think, Tim. Yeah. I think that Robin and Kurt, I mean, everybody is so great in this movie, but Robin is, like, Ugh. amazing, like, heartbreaking, yeah. just in everything that he says. And there's this really interesting thing about Kermit and Robin where – Everything that's said is like so sentimental. Like you see them coming home. You don't know that they're coming home from church, mm -hmm. you know, and Miss Piggy's like, oh, how was he at church? Mm -hmm. And Kermit says, good as gold and better. Mm -hmm. And that's such a non sarcastic, just very like earnest, nice mm -hmm. thing to say. But I never go into like eye roll territory. You know what I mean? Like it all just feels like these people are happy. Yeah. And they don't need to be cynical nope. in anything. You no. Know? So in that, I'm 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 very impressed with both of those performances. Yeah. I, this might be, I mean, I love Kermit normally. Kermit is like so put upon, you know, he's know. the director of the show. And so he's always like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. but right. in this, he faces all of the problems with such like grace and strength. Mm -hmm. That it's like, oh my gosh, Kermit, you're like acting up a storm here. It's like, the performance of a lifetime. Yeah, I think so. I think so. He's not funny in this one. No. And Kermit is no. really funny the rest of the time. But in this movie, I think this is the best acting that we see from Kermit. Yeah. Who is your favorite Muppet in this movie and then outside? I, I really like um, Scooter. Yeah. Didn't Scooter get bumped from this movie? He did, yeah. I really like him. I do really like Kermit and Gonzo. Uh, in the original Muppet movie, Gonzo sings this song called I'm Going to Go Back There Someday. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that one. I don't think so. That song just makes me cry. Just uh, Sometimes if I'm driving, I'll just put it on like five times in a row and yeah. just cry. Um, yeah. Because, you know, Gonzo is, even amongst the Muppets, Gonzo is a weirdo and yeah. an outsider. Yeah. And I didn't love Muppets in Space where like they really answer like where he comes from. And that was like not that's not my favorite Muppet movie, even though I I, I think it is still pretty funny. But yeah, I think I think I would say I think I'm just gonna say Kermit. 
Yeah. Was Kermit your favorite in this movie too? Like if you had to pick one in this one. No, Gonzo and Rizzo are I mean they're the like, amazing in this movie. Hilarious. Our fearless leaders. I yes. know. Yes. Really funny. And how Gonzo is just like, I'm Charles Dickens. And Rizzo's <laughs> like, No, you're not. He's like, Yeah, I am. And then it's just never brought up again. It's it's great. And he like ninety five percent of what he said is in a Christmas carol. By yes. Charles Dickens. Yes. I did see, you know, a lot of people call this the best Christmas. Mm-hmm carol adaptation i can't answer that because as you and i discovered there are like 55 (laughs) seems like every other year since 1908 they've been making christmas carol adaptations so i'm not gonna say that is this the best one that i've ever seen probably yeah yeah i've never seen any other movie i've only seen it on stage in theater oh, cool. live cool. theater like yeah. we used to go every year to theater three and see a christmas carol oh very and cool. i would love i we were in port jeff over the weekend and i was i said to Anne, oh we should go one year because that yeah. would be fun to revisit but i am curious to see earlier versions just to com- just to see yeah kind of early filmmaking not so much to compare it to muppets because nothing's going to top this henson and company created such you know the phrase is lightning in a bottle there's nothing like the muppets and for people who love the Muppets, the Muppets will always be tops. And for people who hate the Muppets, they are never going to, you know, be on this side of things. And it's it's sad because the Muppets are kind of like like they do everything. They do it all. Mm-hmm. They do real strange satire. They do real weird, subversive humor. I mean, the Muppet show, some of the skits on the Muppet show is like just like an acid trip. You know, yeah. like, I don't even know what they were thinking here. And then there's really great sentimental stuff. Yeah. yeah, they 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 do all of it. And what struck me this time around was, you know, knowing that this was the first thing that they did after Jim Henson died. Mm-hmm. Brian Henson said that they had a meeting the day that he died. Did you see this? I just read that this was Brian's first directing. So the day that Jim died, Brian and a few other people who were like key to the team, like had a meeting and he was like, do we, we want to keep doing this? And they were all like, yeah, this is our life work. And of course. And so prior to this, the Muppet movies were all the Muppets as themselves in the real world going on these kind of adventures. But the Muppet show was all about the Muppets as actors doing different performances. And so their first movie back being a Christmas Carol, it was just like, there's such a spirit of like the show must go on. Mm -hmm. That was like really like touching and like sentimental to me and just made me cry even more thinking of that, like that. Yes. The voice is different. And like the person behind All of the control is different, but the Muppets can live forever in a way. And people will be like, oh, you know, this era of Muppets is my favorite and this one is my favorite. And people do that with everything. But just that the Muppets weren't just tied to Jim Henson is great for everybody, you know? It is, but it also stays in the family, too, which I love. Yeah. I was into the Muppets as a kid, definitely. But it wasn't until I had my son... The Muppet movie that came out, the Jason Segel one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the first TV show or movie that my son like watched. And he would just stand there and watch it. Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. and I don't know if his young brain just like (laughs) couldn't comprehend (laughs) what was happening. (laughs) But he just loved everything Muppets. And so when your kid love something that much you love something that much and you also like go into it with him and so you know for my childhood and then my son's childhood the Muppets will always be like incredibly important to me do they watch Muppet Christmas Carol now yeah absolutely and I I showed it to my youngest son now and when it ended he said let's watch it again oh and I said okay I gotta watch it anyway for this thing so (laughs) Do your kids find the ghost of Christmas past creepy? And do you find the ghost of Christmas past creepy? You know, if they do, they didn't say anything. I do. It's very off-putting. 
because of the setting, she resembles more the Gelflings from the Henson's film, The Dark Crystal. When you're watching that movie, it fits into that world. (laughs) Yeah. But in this one, it's just like humans, Muppets, and then a human-like skeleton face with a jellyfish body. It's weird. It's it's and the yeah. creepiest baby doll hand. Yes. Ugh. I took note like the body never stops moving, but we don't see limbs like a lot. We see like the tiny mm-hmm. little mm-hmm. <laughs> hand. Yeah. And it's real odd. And I like that they do keep her facial expressions going in the background. She does blink. She yeah. does nod. Yeah. I saw creepy though. I saw that uh, Scrooge does not blink during any of his close-ups in this movie. Really? Yeah. So next time I watch it, I'm gonna try to pay attention to that. Wow. I just noticed Michael Caine tearing up more as Scrooge. Yeah. Yeah. On his close-ups, like I could see emotion coming through, and I I think also I was just I mean I feel like I realize this every year, but Michael Caine acting with Muppets and not mocking it and doing the most sincere job ever yeah, and killing it. I'm like, this acting performance is five stars. Absolutely. I mean, Michael Caine had a great career yeah. prior to this. Yeah. And he had a great career after this. Whenever a big actor comes into like a kid's thing or like a superhero thing or whatever, there's a real risk of them kind of making a fool of themselves. <laughs> Yeah. And he doesn't. He absolutely doesn't. Every emotion that he displays, you feel with him. Yeah. Like, you never feel like, oh, this guy's really chewing the scenery. Or like, oh, well, he's in a Muppet movie, so he's just going over the top. Not once. When he's angry, it's scary. When he's crying, you're crying. When he's smiling, when he starts to do his like... Oh, my God, the dance. (gasps) Oh. (laughs) His little hoppy dance thing. I love it so much. It it becomes like the most touching, beautiful, funny thing you've ever seen in in your life. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. (laughs) it really is like a great performance. Yeah. It's so funny because all I can think of is people listening to this who don't like the Muppets and they're like, what are they talking about? But I'm sorry. Like, listen to this. It's not for them. This is not for them. (laughs) Don't don't listen to this if you're not into the Muppets or if you've never seen Muppet Christmas Carol. And if you do listen to this and you're you know, undecided, go watch them up at Christmas Carol. Yeah, and don't absolutely. tell me you don't cry when Kermit starts singing. Absolutely. Before we move on from the first ghost, they filmed that with a puppeteer first in a tank full of olive oil. I'm imagining like a scuba, something kind of a setup is required. I don't know. Can you imagine risking your life to puppeteer this? <laughs> like, I don't you, understand if, the logistics of it. If baby oil comes rushing into your nose and mouth, like you're done. You're done for. So then they switched to water because they said it became too expensive. I wonder why oil. I, I didn't see this specifically, but what they did say is when they switched to water, that the paint on the doll or the on the puppet like didn't interact well with it. Yeah, I... I just like can't even. I know, I know. I mean, hey, they conceptualize they, it. They are the magic makers, you know. That's yeah, absolutely. And it worked. I mean, yeah, it she's flowy and floating. It's unbelievable. And you know what? Give me that instead of CGI. Just if well, if, if that's that, what it looks like. Speaking my language, I know. You know. But if that's what it looks like, just put everything in a tank mm-hmm. and let it float around. Because this, that's right. It still looks great. It looks so good. How do you feel about the second ghost? The second ghost is super jolly. Yeah. And I like that <laughs> when we first meet him, he repeats himself. Because, you yes. know, he's the ghost of Christmas present. Right. And by now, like, Ebony's are starting to soften. Mm-hmm. And they're making jokes with each other. He's pretty cool. He can get big, get small. He's relieved to be away from the first well, ghost. Sure, who's showing him very painful things from the past. Yeah. Yeah, I like this guy. And he is very jolly, but then he can get very serious. Sure, and... he has to be. You know, he shows him the nephew's house and the mean game that they're playing. Mm -hmm. And I think that you do really feel for Scrooge in that moment. I mean, it's horrible. Like, Scrooge is a terrible guy, evicting people on Christmas Day. Like, the stack of evictions is, like, 200 pages long, you know. He's throwing out people, throwing wreaths on little 
rabbit. That it's was, just a caroler. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. But you do still feel for him. At least I yeah. do. I do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because he's getting excited. He's like, oh, take me to my dear nephew. Yeah. Fred's house. Let me see what they're playing. So, yeah, we well, we skipped over it a little bit, but the Ghost of Christmas Past shows him all of these, like every Christmas Eve and Christmas, like over his life, explaining why this dude hates Christmas so much. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons why is because his fiance breaks up with him on Christmas, but it's mm-hmm. because Scrooge is like, oh, we don't have enough money, you know, to Well, to we've get seen married. from a, right, and we, we learn from a very young age that he's doesn't seem to have a family to go home to. He also is obsessed with business. Yes, right. headmaster. Business. Right. I mean, yeah. Sam the Eagle. Let's give it up for Sam the Eagle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when he says, like, this is the American way. Right. <laughs> oh, the British way. The British way. So yeah. good. But we see how much he's obsessed with business. Even at Fozzie, you know, at the at the party. Fozzie Wigs, yeah. Fozzie Wigs Christmas party. Rubber Chicken Factory. Yeah. He doesn't understand, like, like Anything that doesn't make him money isn't good. Yeah. And I, I I understand fixation. You know, like I understand if he from a young age was like Christmas sucks. Christmas mm-hmm. sucks for me. And so mm-hmm. I don't celebrate it. Mm-hmm. And why why should I have to? Mm-hmm. But then, yeah, his fiance recognizes that she he just doesn't love her because if he loved her, he would do the wedding. And he's saying that he's putting it off for this reason and that reason. But he's really putting it off maybe because he's a jerk. No, because in his mind, he needs to have certain the amount of money he thinks he needs to get married and buy a house hasn't been met yet. And he's more focused on that. Right. I don't think it makes him a jerk. His priorities are not in line. Yeah. But it is sad. So the ghost of Christmas present is the one who shows him Bob Cratchit's house. This is when we get Tiny Tim with the God bless us, everyone. And he's really sick. And he sings the song, The Love We Found. And uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. I mean, it's a sop fest. Yeah. You can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> and even though the ghost of Christmas present only knows the present, he still tells him, like, yeah, I see an empty chair. And I think this is not just when Michael Caine realizes, like, oh, I've really kind of not been as nice as I could, but he realized like, oh, my indifference has caused people to die. Right. Because he says, he's like, I really don't pay Bob enough. Mm -mm. How do you feel about Miss Piggy in this movie? As Emily? Yeah. I mean, she's pretty great. I feel like it's it's like Miss Piggy got this role and she's like, I'll do it because I'm married to Kermie, you know? (laughs) But I don't really want to be this. She can't keep her daughter straight. Yeah. Bettina and Belinda. Yeah. Peter is the sweetest thing on earth. Uh, and she brings that when she has to, you know, fight for her family when she speaks up to mm-hmm. Scrooge when he wakes up, I think was pretty great. But I mean, Miss Piggy always gives a great performance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's she's great. And yeah, she just kind of keeps that house from like floating off into the stratosphere yeah. of sentiment mm-hmm. a little bit. Right. But... It's not really overstated. Like Miss Piggy is usually like doing karate chops. You know what I mean? Like uh, it's real over the top stuff. Mm -hmm. And in here it it feels like it fits. And that's one of the odd things about this movie is everything feels like it fits. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I know it (laughs) does. Like if you can, you, you really can see beyond what's happening and just see characters and actors and performances and emotions and yeah it's great yeah and if you can't i feel real bad for you yeah i have never found the ghost of christmas yet to come scary no me neither yeah like i always found the ghost of christmas past to be more scary 100 <laughs> percent. yeah because the ghost of what's to come it just looks like the Grim Reaper. Yeah, it's just like a hood. And... It's just a, you know, a finger that right, right. points and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's dark, but it's not really scary. Yeah. Creepy, yeah. The scene that's, I feel like, darkest is, uh, well, no, I won't say darkest, but it, it, it feels pretty intense is when they've, like, robbed Scrooge's house. Yes. And they're selling it to the spider. And the warm... 
the bed sheets are still warm. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. whole scene is, uh, ooh. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, As a kid, I think I probably brushed that over. Me too. Me too. But as an adult, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> this is, it's, it's, it's real, real dark. dark. Yeah. 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 I also like that Rizzo and Gonzo are like, oh, we'll see you at the end. You're on yeah. your own. <laughs> and they disappear. It's so good. It's really funny. Then they go to Bob Cratchit's house and Scrooge is like, why is it quiet? Like, why is it so quiet? And then like he looks through the window and you see the stool with his crutch, crutch and his hat on it. And this, again, like this line reading could have been so bad, so bad, but it's not. Michael Caine, like with full tears in his eyes, just says, not tiny Tim. Yep. And like you saying it, and if I were to say it, you laugh. Yes. But when he says it, you are hysterical yes. right now. Because, and he, yeah. he is crying. Yeah. I would have loved to be on that set. I know. To see oh like Michael Caine surrounded by puppets and like talking to this Grim Reaper dude and just like crying and crying. Also love when he's shown his own grave and he's like, you know, can I sponge this from existence? And first of all, I'm like, well, Scrooge, you are going to die. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but not like this. You don't right. want to go this way. Yeah. I think we're supposed to believe that it's like the next year. That like if yeah, he doesn't mend that's his how ways, I like, took it. Him and Tiny Tim will be dead by next Christmas. Mm hmm. Yep. But he says a life can be made right. And you just see like this dude like grasping at anything that he can to find redemption. And it's intense for a kid's movie. And I'll save it for later. But we have to remember that this is for kids. And that's mm -hmm. why this movie rules so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, how do you feel about the songs? I love the songs. I grew like I said, I grew up with the soundtrack. So, uh, one more sleep till Christmas okay. is really. I mean, like they're all so good. They really are. So but that one is really when it it starts. Yeah, like, Marley and start, Marley yeah. isn't great for me. Yeah, I mean, I I love the, those two, but yeah. it's like a simple song. Yeah. But that one and then Thankful Heart is yeah. the title. Like his dance, you know. Yeah. Michael Caine's little dancing, his little jolly step, singing with every done. When he done. when he comes towards the camera and does yeah. the little finger taps on Rizzo and Gonzo's hats, or when he wakes up the next day and he looks in the mirror and pulls on his hair, he's like, yes. "Oh, oh, good." And then looks at himself. He's like, "Well," and then he's right. like, "Ah, never mind," and walks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite song? Like "Thankful Heart" is what it's called. Mm -hmm. "Thankful yeah. Heart," I really think is probably the best. Um, but it feels like Christmas, whatever that song yeah. is called. Mm -hmm. That one is also really good. Um, yeah. And I think is kind of the turning point for Scrooge where it's like all of these things are Christmas. Like all of mm -hmm. this is Christmas and it's not just one day. It's supposed to be mm -hmm. all year. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think Marley and Marley is probably my least favorite. I do like the opening song. Oh, yeah, like the, the opening Scrooge song. song. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the cheeses for our, us Mises is yeah. the Jesus best line. Yeah, yeah. That's, I can't wait to say it every year. Yeah. I exclaim it. They they mispronounce the plural of mouse twice. Because yeah. they say something like, it's harder if you're mices or something. Mouses. <laughs> Mouses, yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty, pretty great. Do you have mm -hmm. a favorite Rizzo and Gonzo interaction? I love that Rizzo's just eating throughout the movie. Like, I feel you. <sighs> Yeah. I love a good snack. Well, I love the opening line when Gonzo's like, I'm here to tell you the story. And Rizzo <laughs> says, and I'm here for the free lunch or whatever he says. I'm here for the food. Yeah. I never noticed this before and I sent it to you earlier, but I have to bring it up here. They're talking about things are getting creepy. What about the children? Yeah. It's in the story. And Gonzo says, oh, it's culture, which yeah. is a great line. Yeah. And then Rizzo responds with like, oh. I found some jelly beans in my pocket. <laughs> Gonzo looks at him and Rizzo just kisses him on the nose. It's great. It's amazing. I don't know how I, maybe I have noticed it, but this year it really affected me and I rewound it and I was like, get in here right now. Right. I was like, watch this. It's 
my favorite part of the movie, I think. And it's it's personality. It's just so Oh my god, I love it so much. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. probably that one, that whole jelly bean thing and then like <laughs> crawling through the gate when you just <laughs> jumped off and God bless my poor broken body. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. And then of course, you know, the great Gonzo's and tiny Tim who did not did die. Not die. <laughs> <laughs> so after, after Scrooge wakes up, it's the, you know, boy, what day is it thing? And yeah, for me, this is a part where I really, really cry. Yeah. Scrooge's outfit, all black. We get like the t- tiny, teeniest pop of a white collar underneath, but he's like all black as he's walking through the streets and everything. And the next day, he's back into all black and he sees the charity workers that he had thrown out the day before. And he tells him he's going to give him a bunch of money. And Beaker, Beaker gets the biggest cry from me in this whole movie. He gives him the scarf and Scrooge looks at it and he's like, a gift for me? And he puts it on and it's just like this pop of color against his black. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's incredible. I'm starting to cry now that I, you're talking I, I, about it's, it. It's he's incredible. so sincere and he's just like, thank you. Yes. Thank you so yes. much. I, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. again, this is how they're communicating these things to kids. You yeah. can understand everything they're saying through color and feelings and emotions, you know, big, broad brush strokes. You, you get, even if you don't comprehend it fully, you understand what's happening and yeah. that they made these principles so accessible to kids. It's great. You know, someone, I I read something about this is the worst Muppet movie because the Muppets are supposed to be the counterculture of the seventies. And that's their, that's supposed to be their whole thing. They're supposed to be subversive and they're supposed to be countercultural. And the Muppet movie is all just like smarmy and good feelings. But I would posit that this is just as countercultural because it is very anti money Mm -hmm. (laughs) at Christmas time. And Mm -hmm. the Cratchits, you know, we they have a meager feast, and the spirit of Christmas present says yes, but they're very grateful. Yep. And it is very hard to be grateful in, in any given day. And mm-hmm. so I, I think that this is subversive and countercultural to this to yeah. the you know uh, Christmas season where everyone is stressed. Everyone is so stressed out. Bob Cratchit's son is dying. He works seven days a week and has to beg for Christmas off. And he doesn't seem stressed at all. No, and he toasts to Scrooge. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Paul Williams wrote all the classic Muppet songs. Great, Mm -hmm. great songwriter. Apparently, (laughs) Michael Caine came in to record his songs and told Paul Williams, I don't know how to do this, but I'll do it anyway. Yeah. I read that. And I, I love his performance of his last song because it brought me back to my point about the Newsies where they're not necessarily the best singers, mm-hmm. but that kind of endears them to you more. Mm-hmm. And Michael Caine, again, could have made a fool of himself and doesn't. He just grabs it and does it. And I feel like I feel like you have to really have a chip on your shoulder to not respect like what he did in this movie. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I'm sure there are people who have comments. Yeah. Likewise, Brian Henson, this was the first film that he directed. I know. And he's what, 28? 28. Whoa. 28. And he takes this production on and it, it, it looks great, sounds great. Everything works well together. In fact, Michael Caine didn't know that it was his first film. He said that he found out halfway through filming that he had never made a movie before. And he was like, what? It's amazing. (laughs) It's amazing. So this movie was made for $12 million. Makes $27 million at the box office. So good. Good for them. That's good. Not a crazy smash hit. No, that's okay. Not Home Alone money, but Mm -mm. currently has 77 on Rotten Tomatoes. That's way too low. Letterbox 3.9. It's pretty good. Metacritic 64. 
that's ridiculous. No. Absurd. That no. Let's burn those people. <laughs> Seth. Roger Ebert gave this uh, three stars. So we'll go to a segment of the show now where we hear people's opinions on the internet that we don't know. It's called Half Star, Three Star, Five Star. Half Star, Three Star, Five Star. All right, so these are reviews from Letterboxd.com. We start with a half star review, which is the lowest rating that you can give a film. We go all the way up to a five star review, which is the highest rating that you can give a film. And as is tradition, I will read this half star review in an accent. And I was thinking about doing Michael Caine. It's just a British dude. Michael Caine. No. No, do Kermit. My, but I'm gonna do Kermit. Okay. I feel mm. like the only thing I can do as Kermit is Kermit the Frog here. Mm-hmm. 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 You gotta, you gotta pretend that there's a hand in your mouth going. I like, know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Half star review from Kermit the Frog. Okay. It's the Muppet Show with our very special guest, Michelle Rubenstein. Yay! Yeah. Okay. Kind of sounds like Yoda. Okay. Mm, well, well, it stinks. How do you have a Muppet movie with Kermit as a bit player? Same with Miss Piggy. Gonzo and a rat cannot carry a movie. There are no laughs. No Muppety fun. Just dourness as far as the eye can see. Oh, and it's boring. Well, it's a Muppet movie. Not even one pun? It stinks. Half star. Seb, that was great! Fights in the middle were a little so, hard. No, that oh. was really good. <sighs> Thanks. Wow, we are ending on a high note. To do Kermit, you just have to say, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, but I sound more no. like Yoda. I can't right. get that like. Mm. 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 Yeah. Yoda. Yoda and Yoda, Kermit. Yoda, I see. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Yoda, uh, what do you want to do later? Mm, watch the Muppet movies I do. Oh, okay. Well, I was thinking maybe we could watch um, Star Wars. Mm, Star Wars sucks, it does. <laughs> That's really good. <sighs> okay, I'm I done. could just leave. You guys, I'm like you, we should just do a whole episode as Kermit and <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's just Seth talking to himself. So anyway, this person says it stinks. And listener, again, if you're listening for the first time, we do not judge people for their reviews online, except for this guy. This yeah, guy's no, this wrong. This guy's totally wrong. Number one, he says there's no puns. This movie is rife with right. puns. They even comment on the puns that they're making. Yeah. There are no laughs. No Muppety fun. That's insanity. Yeah. I guess this guy just wanted like pigs in space, but okay. Right. Anyway. Anyway. Moving on. Three Star Review says some good parts, especially if you like the Muppets. I think if you choose to watch this one then you will most likely get what you think you will get. I neither loved or hated this one. I think I have only seen it once or twice before. Overall, to me, it is mildly entertaining. Wish I liked it more, but also I would watch it again. All right, well, whatever. Sounds like you're fine with it either way. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like about this review was you could kind of like just slap it. Like, he doesn't say anything about the actual movie. I know. Yeah. Oh, well. It's just, yeah. Five Star Review says, heartbreak, joy, sorrow, excitement, tears of sadness, and tears of elation, laughter, musical, philanthropic, all words I use to describe this. Just bundle it into one big mash of feelings. No other movie makes me want to go outside and start hugging random people in the street. Pure magic, Muppet magic. Five stars. Yeah, it's a good one. I agree. All right. So what are you rating this film? You want do me you to recommend go first? it? Yeah, I can go first. You can go first. Whatever. I can go first. Okay. Uh, this is a five-star film. <laughs> no notes. No notes. It's perfection. Highly recommend. I had a couple people respond to my story last night. I oh, posted yeah? how I can confirm that the ghost is still creepy at age 36. Got it. And I had a couple of people respond to me like, I've never seen Muppet Christmas Carol. And I'm like, what? What is wrong with you? That's wild. 
Also, you should watch it. And I highly recommend this. I mean, I guess if you hate Muppets, don't because then you'll just be cynical. Right. But if you hate Muppets, I don't trust you anyway. And I actually don't want to like hang out with you oh or talk to you. God. No. You're missing a whole just universe of wonder. Delight. Yeah. Yeah. I texted Sam last night. I said, this is a five star movie. Michael Caine is amazing. And I'm just, I'm crying. I was like sobbing and actually Aunt walked out and I'm like, I'm just, I'm just, ha- I like, I was so clogged from the yeah. crying. Yeah. Yeah. And Sam's like, it's not that high. I was like, she goes, Kermit gets five stars, but I was like, oh. okay. What are you rating it? I think that this is a film. I think that this is a five star movie. Seth. <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> We're rating Muppet Christmas Carol five I, star film. And you know what? I feel great about rating this five stars because I really thought about it. I've I've been thinking about it for like two days. Like, what do I think? And we always say like you go with your gut. For my own personal way of figuring out what is a five star movie, this hits everything. There's nothing in this that I would cut. In fact, the scene that was cut. I would put back in. That's right. That's right. Yep. And to reiterate what I said earlier, this is a five-star movie because this is for kids. And this is what the Muppets team is communicating for children about like the realities of life and that they continued the show after their Kermit died to continue their work and to make him proud and to continue his name. It's a five star movie. Like there's no, there's no doubt in my mind at all. And I do recommend that you see this. And if you haven't seen this since you were a kid and you are into film, rewatch this movie and don't watch it as a Muppet movie. Don't watch it as a Christmas movie or a kid's movie. Watch this as a movie and take note of everything that you're doing. The miniature work, the cinematography, the effects, and realize this is all practical stuff. You know, like I said, except for the vortex that they walk into and, you know, the, yes. the dude shrinking down. I mean, they use a the green screen a lot. So, yeah, so. but right. they're doing all of this for real. And mm-hmm. they did not need to go this hard. This could have been a straight to VHS sloppy oh, yeah. production. And it's not. Simple it is, stage performance they could have done. Yep. Just film a stage perfection. performance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, hey, that's it. That's it, Seth. We did it. Thank goodness. Yeah, we finally found a movie about Christmas that I like. I know. And we finished out our first year of movies. Yeah. On a banner. Yeah. Five star <laughs> film. Wow, 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 wow. It's wow. a Christmas miracle. It sure is. If you want to be a Christmas miracle, leave us a rating or a review. We would love it. And if you don't do it in the spirit of Christmas, you're going to hell. Like, I don't know how else to say it. Like, Scrooge. I mean, he turned his life around, okay? Think of Michelle as Tiny Tim. Think of her coughing, okay? (coughs) Think about next year. Is she going to be around next year? Who knows? Your review just might save her. Oh, my God. This is like superstition we're getting into. If you don't send the review, Michelle's dead. We'd also love it if you'd send us an email. Moviefriendspodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. You can also support the show, patreon.com slash moviefriendspodcast. $5 a month gets you access to a ton of extra episodes. It's great. Support an independent podcast team and, uh, you know, again, save your soul from eternal damnation. Turn from your greedy, wicked ways. <laughs> we were so positive. <laughs> Seth's just going off the deep end. He's back. We are taking a break, mini break, yeah. not a big yeah. break. For the first time in a year, we've been at yeah. this week in, week out. We've produced close to three episodes a week. I think if you total it all up, it's a lot. It's a lot. We've done a whole lot in one year. Mm-hmm. So we are taking a break until our live show, January 13th, all in New York. I don't know if we've said it officially on the show yet, but we're going to be talking about Shrek 2. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. You should come out, hang out with us. There's going to be really cool people there. And yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. 
and next time Seth and I will be podcasting together is live. Yep. In front of you guys. Yep. Come we're see gonna how go, the magic is made. We're going from a five star movie to Shrek 2. Which is still highly rated. We'll see. Well, thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Seth. Merry this Christmas, was, everyone. This was fun. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah. And hey, we'll see you in the funny papers. <laughs> Wait, what do I normally say? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Th- thanks for listening. Have a good one. Movie Friends is produced by Seth Vargas and Michelle Rubenstein. Music by Anthony Vicora. If you like the show, please subscribe and give us a rating. It really helps us find new friends. Thanks.